Welcome and bienvenue. Welcome. I hope you know what you're in for. From football to drag queens, it's coming your way. With Aaron and Erica, take it away. Not going to say anything? All right, makes me a bit sad, but we'll roll with it. Welcome and bienvenue. Welcome. To Fanbase, to Fanbase, to Fanbase! This week on Fanbase, we dive into a world of witchcraft and wizard stuff by finding out what the muggles on the streets have to say about Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. We go down to Monash University to get amongst the Monash Muggles Quidditch team. We even have a real magician, Aaron. Oh my god, Erica. I tell you what, it's going to be goddamn magical. It sure is, Aaron. <laughs> Hubble bubble, a boil and trouble, everybody. My name is Aaron Drew. And my name is Erica Lewis. Welcome to our very first episode of Fanbase. On Fanbase, we'll be exploring the different subcultures and fandoms within Melbourne for six exciting episodes. That is correct, Erica. Over the next six weeks, we are diving into all things driving you crazy in Melbourne. Today, we begin with a fandom that has been going strong since 1997, Aaron. The Harry Potter series, written by J.K. Rowling and Magic, is where we are beginning today, with over 800 thousand fan fictions written the popular wizard boy has delighted our screens for 18 years and it's gained a massive following in Melbourne Australia is obsessed with the magic and we are too we've had numerous plays such as puffs and the cursed child find a home in Melbourne along with comedy groups who improvise Potter that's right Erica there is no lack of fun events or fans around the city that's why we've decided to head down to the Princess Theatre in Melbourne and check out what the fans thought of Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Roll the clip. We are outside Harry Potter and the Cursed Child at the Princess Theatre. Aaron, this is such an amazing event. Tell us a little bit more about it. Well, we were interacting with some of the fans beforehand, asking them some questions, and I tell you what, the fan base for Harry Potter seems to be even bigger than my ego. But that's not what we're here for. We're here to ask some real serious questions about how the show is uh, and how it's playing out inside. I'm here with Peter right now. Peter, you just saw Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. How was it? Oh, amazing. The special effects are just mind-blowing. You've just seen the play. How was it? It was really good. It was, it was really good. very good, awesome. yeah. So Rachel and Lucy, uh, did you enjoy the show? It was amazing, like, mind-blowing. ask you, how was the show? Was it incredible? Yeah, we loved it. I really loved it. Did you? Yeah, me too. Me too. Really good um, special effects. As good as, like, the films or...? Better, I reckon. Really? Oh my god. What was your favourite part? Probably when like the Dementors dropped from the ceiling, they just like came out of nowhere. It was really surprising. Oh, yeah. um, what house are you a part of? I am a proud Ravenclaw, um, which uh, has been confirmed by Pottermore twice, so there's no doubt about that. What house? I no, I I cheated. I cheated. I am Hufflepuff, oh, but I cheated to get Gryffindor. <laughs> I've never checked. Haven't never checked. I'm a Slytherin, that's okay. Sometimes it's best not to know. <laughs> Thanks so Did you have a favourite character in the play tonight? Um, I would definitely have to say Scorpius. I'm a huge fan of William McKenna. He just he's such a good actor, it was just amazing. Um Scorpius. Scorpius. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Really? What an amazing production. Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Be sure to come down and check it out if you ever get the chance. It's one not to miss. Now back to us in the studio. No, it's Levi Osa, not Levi Osa, Aaron. Oh, looks like you guys caught us working on our magic again. <laughs> you can catch Harry Potter and the Cursed Child running at the Princess Theatre from now until February 2020.
My name is Daniel and I'm from the Monash Muggles Quidditch team. So yeah, we're actually a club who plays Quidditch from Harry Potter, as we all know from the movies and the books. Um, yeah, but obviously we have to play it a little differently as, you know, we don't have flying broomsticks or anything like that. Yeah, so we train here every Thursdays and Tuesdays. It's a great social activity to, you know, get us out into the campus, you know, exploring campus life, all that kind of fun stuff. And you meet so many great people while doing it. It's such a great community to be a part of. I think playing Quidditch is great for a few things, you know? It's great for socialization. You get to go out on campus and meet so many cool people that you may not have met before because we're all studying different things, you know? Some of us are science students, some of us are art students. You know, we, we come from all different parts and it's good to have an activity that brings us all together. And also, you know, it, it's a sport. There's physical activity involved and it's great to keep moving and active and healthy in such a fun, positive environment. Yeah, so obviously we don't have any flying broomsticks or magic, so, you know, a bit disappointing, but we make do, we make do. Um, we actually use a person as the snitch, that's a question we get a lot. So one of our players on the field is the snitch that uh, obviously needs to be caught. I nearly died, I'm having fun, that's the important thing, right? We out here, your boy asked me he's got a chest infection. So, who do you think has been better out there? Uh, well, Eric is showing real signs of relevance. Uh, I saw a few back flips jump to the hoop. She's so actually uh, doing pretty well. Eric? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I'm in terms of, you know, you're running around a lot, what you're doing is one to two hand catching, depending on obviously how stationary you are. Um, obviously from the Harry Potter books, yeah. um, which I think to everyone who's seen the movie, kind of it's a bit of a weird idea, hence kind of that awkward look in a conversation. Yeah, it was interesting to have Aaron and Erica down in the field having a go. Um, not too sure about Aaron's skills, but Erica, yeah, is definitely a spot on our team for Erica. She's a bit of a natural. Uh, Aaron though, mm, not so much. I would recommend Quidditch to anyone who's at university and wants to get out and, you know, meet new people and explore university culture and university life because it's a great way to do it. Well, uh, once again, my ego has been uh, utterly shattered. Aaron, catch! Uh, I guess oh I couldn't expect any improvement in the last five minutes. But this has been a great time here. Don't you agree? Yes, big thank you to the uh, Monash Muggles for having us and for putting up with my, my awful play. Back to us. Erica, don't tell anyone, but I heard that we have a very special guest coming on today. Really? So I purchased a pack of cards and I've been practicing a little bit of magic. Oh, um, okay. do, do you want me to do a quick card trick with you? You think you can? Uh, no, but I'll give it a red hot <laughs> shot. All right, pick All a right. card. All right. Okay, fantastic. Mm -hmm. All right. Now give me the card. Is this your card? Oh my gosh, Aaron, that's know. amazing. I know, oh, I know. That's incredible. I know, I know. I didn't <laughs> oh. Anyway, speaking of real magic, our next guest is Australia's most famous magician. He has appeared in over 150 television programs and we are very excited to welcome him into the studio today. Please give a big fan base welcome to the one and only Tim Ellis. Thank you. I'm still stunned by that. I have no <laughs> idea how I, or why you did that. I practiced long and hard. Um, Mum was impressed. Um, oh, okay. Dad, slightly less so. Um, but yeah, how, how yeah. are you, Tim? How's, I'm good, I'm um, good, yes. yes. So, That's good. we're going to jump straight into our first question. Um, how long have you been practicing magic for? Uh, unlike Aaron, uh, I've been practicing <laughs> magic uh, for a long, long time. When I was uh, 10 years old, my grandfather gave me old. a set of the Hanky Panky Magic Kit. Hanky panky oh, magic yes. kit. And how does that work? I've never heard of it. It's a little box of magic tricks. They oh. still they still sell them, uh, different versions. You'd learn tricks like uh, you could take a magic wand uh -huh. and uh, you just give it a little bit of a static electricity yeah. uh, energy onto it and then you could take it there and it would cling to your fingers. Whoa, what? But they were very simple tricks. So oh, okay. you, know, you just start off with the very I easy ones. I think I remember ones. when I had like a magic <laughs> set trick um yeah. we had like these little ropes yes and then ropes. um yeah and then you like mm. it changes different sizes and that sort of thing and I so remember, many tricks there's so yeah, many it was actually so much fun so I was that what inspired it. you to get into magic that 
the uh, whole hanky panky magic kit? It, it was the start mm -hmm. of the whole journey. And uh, the main thing that inspired me with magic was once I first performed a trick. Like, I mean, you did your card tricks. So, yes. like, for example, if I was to ask you to choose a card, oh. um, this is the sort of thing that sort of explains why magicians get into magic. If okay. I ask you to simply look at the cards and yeah. name, just name any card that takes your fancy. Don't let me influence you. Oh, yeah, but okay. bear in mind, I will force you to choose the card I want you to choose. All right. Which one do you want? Uh, your choice. I'm going to go. Wait, can I get the Queen of Hearts? Is that all right? Very helpful. But you can have a free choice. If you want, <laughs> just name it out loud. I want to go with the Nine of Hearts. Well, but between but the two of you, make a decision. Okay. okay. Where do you want to go? I'm going to go with the Nine of Hearts. I don't know why. Oh, okay. I'm just going to do oh, it. The I don't Nine know of Hearts? Yeah. Over here. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. interesting. Yeah. So you could have gone to any card, but you chose the Nine of Hearts. Hold your hand out for a second. I'm going to that in your hand. Now, there's no markings or trapdoors or concealed compartments or ATMs or email addresses. There's no. nothing on the cards. No reason why you choose one this more is than your another. Deck of cards, Aaron. Okay. But I knew you'd choose the Nine of Hearts. How? how, how I can't tell it? you. It's a secret. Is that is that the is that the truth? Well, I thought I'd just stay with the oh, standard fantastic. you've already set. So. <laughs> no, no, no. Turn it over. No, okay. Look. Oh. <laughs> uh, what? Can we show that to the camera? Oh my gosh. What's that? Um. Okay. So my mind's blown. Um. Does a magician ever reveal his tricks? Is that a is that an old? Uh... Well, that's actually one that I invented myself. Really? But this is the thing. Is that that's why. I got into magic. As okay. soon as you do the first trick and you see the reaction that it has on people, yeah. you start to go, I want more of this. Yeah. It's like a, like a power trip mm, into some mm. sense. But it's also good because if you're a young kid who's uh, just learning mm. social skills and going through school and having trouble meeting other people, learning magic is one of the things that can build your confidence and can make you a little bit more you know, uh, uh, social, a little yes. bit more active, and also really stimulates your mind as you try to figure out how to create tricks yeah. like that. Oh my gosh. Well, obviously, you're very well versed in magic and you've um, performed all over Australia. Mm -hmm. Where do you reckon has been your favourite place to perform and why? <sighs> Probably at FISM, which is the World Championships of Magic, where okay. I actually got to perform uh, in front of. 2,000 other magicians oh, yes. and uh, try to impress them. Is but there a little bit of a uh, butting heads there? Is there a bit no. of competition between there's, them? There's, there's, there's competition, but there's also the desire to be fooled. There's a trick that I came up with years ago uh, involving a can that reseals itself and does all sorts of things, and I, I, I put some twists on this trick, and I was probably one of the first people to ever perform it for magicians. Mm. And the magicians, when we lectured it and taught it to other magicians at, at lectures, as we do, were saying, we don't want to know how that trick's done <laughs> oh because we haven't been <laughs> fooled like this for years and we forgot the feeling that you get when you mm. when you see a trick and Magic you're fooled. Magic certainly does have that. It does. Uh, that, I kind of the wow that, factor, that wow Erica, factor. the wow factor. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, we'd uh, like yeah. to thank you so much for joining us in the studio th today. Yeah, you know, so it's, thank you. I still can't. Do, figure that shall out. We, shall we wrap it up with one last question? Yeah, let me trip? try one other okay. one. Um, okay. uh, think of someone you know, someone who I couldn't possibly know. Uh, okay. Have you got someone in mind? Yes, I do. All right. Uh, just think of the name. Okay. It's an unusual name, is it? Because <laughs> I have no idea what I just wrote there. Uh, what was the name you, you were thinking of? Tori. Tori? Yes. Oh, I see. Uh, I do this uh, in my theatre. I have a theatre called the uh, Laneway Theatre. And I do this sort of magic where I read people's minds and it's up close, it's up close in person. It's a secret venue. And uh, this doesn't always work. But on this occasion, I think you'd have to say that does say to What? <laughs> oh, my God. What? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Tim the Magician. Oh, 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 I'm blown God. away. I'm blown that. away. Thank you very much. Oh my god. That's amazing. Oh my god. It's funny because Tori's like... actually in the studio right oh now, god. just by the oh, yeah, door fantastic. there. <laughs> well, that was absolutely astounding. Tim, thank you so much for coming on the show. We'd like to say a big, big, big thank you to, to you and uh, all the magic you showed us Yes, tonight. I might, I'll give you that back so you don't forget your notepad. I will let you have <laughs> Tori as a oh, memento. There thank we go. You. Tor oh I just tore Tori. Oh, Tori. <laughs> oh, poor Tori. I, just, I don't know how he did that. I absolutely don't know either. Fantastic. Oh my god. Go check out his social media appearing on the screen right now with a bit of magic. See what I did there? He also runs a magic class, uh, so go give him a look. Thank you for watching our very first episode of Fanbase. Stick around for next week where we plug into the wonderful and sometimes wacky world of gaming.